This is a Sunday edition of Discussions of Truth. Okay, one of the main reasons for the special edition is because this week, look, Discuss of Truth airs Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard. Okay, it's 3.05, 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard on a Sunday. And I wanted to bring this edition an episode to you uh, for various clarification purposes. Um, we are transitioning to a broadcast platform on stopmassmedia.com. So there are various other websites. That includes my own website, iantrotietier.com, that have audio links and audio listen links to listen to the live broadcast Wednesdays, 5 p.m. Eastern. Okay, so Stop Mass Media transitioning away from Windward Radio is now what is becoming the destination platform to listen to the live broadcast. Of course, all broadcasts are uploaded into podcast platform, uh, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, whatever it may be. I channeled through primarily Anchor.fm. If this is the first time you're hearing my voice, the first time hearing um, an episode, Discussion of Truth aims to deliver to you a weekly discussion of just that. Typically a truth, an alternative view of mainstream narrative. Okay, very simply put, uh, the program is based Miami, Florida, Wednesday evenings, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard. It's hosted by myself, Ian Trottier. Again, we're into February, and this has been going for the past few weeks. As of the new year, 2020, um, the show is heard live on various platforms, but one of them being stopmassmedia.com okay and I'll get into why stop mass media all right um, uh, and I'm not going to get into um, other platforms but we're just going to stick with with uh, stop mass media we hosted the show on Winwood radio from 2016 to 2019 and the uh, relationship continues with Winward Radio and what they're doing. Uh, they are a, a great organization and we support each other. We have just decided collectively that Stop Mass Media is a much better portrayal of the overall message of discussions of truth. Okay, so that's what we, that is, that is the change that has happened. Okay, um, Wednesday hosting uh, Bandy Lee, that's Dr. Bandy X. Lee, uh, the author of, principal author of uh, The Dangerous Case of Donald Trump, psychiatrist at Yale, uh, joined the program. That was followed by a double header um, with uh, a former Fulbright scholar to Brazil, Oxford PhD, uh, and local South Florida um, professor and researcher and author, J.P. Lindstrath. Okay, so Wednesday, uh, we've delivered a doubleheader. And that's something that you can find that is coming more of a common occurrence here on the program. Not only are we broadcasting 5 p.m. Eastern Standard on Wednesdays, but we're following that up with a second hour. Um, Wednesdays at 6. Okay. Not always is that going to be the case, but that it has been the case. That has been a recent, uh, that has been a recent scheduling. Uh, 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 difference. Okay, so that extra hour has been added. 
Not will it be? Don't do not not to be expected, but it, it, it has been added. Okay, what we focus on are toxins and other harmful chemicals which flood the environment. Discuss the truth, and myself, Ian Trottier, we're calling out big box corporations for their carelessness. As epidemics like diabetes, opioid abuse, cancer, heart disease are all products of being exposed to various toxins um, in the environment, okay, whether they're used in agriculture or whether it's the chemtrails, which uh, look at my guest list. It just uh, look. This is this is happening. And chemtrails are not some theory. Yes, NASA is emitting chemicals to combat greenhouse gases. Okay, to combat global warming. To combat um, uh, well, basically to uh, solar uh, solar reflect. All right. Um, this is this is happening. Um, the guest list is extensive at iantrache.com. Um, and I, 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 if you go to my landing page, you will find a, a selection of various politicians, authors, um, activists, uh, concerned citizens that have come on to the program uh, to share with the audience what they have Um uh, uh, researched and discovered and written about. Okay, and I'm going, and, and, but so I'm going to go through that list very quickly. Stephen Kinzer, John Perkins, Nomi Prince, Chris McDaniel, Tom Hartman, who have actually be joining the program Wednesday, this coming Wednesday. Cynthia McKinney, Paul Hellyer, Paul Craig Roberts, Lawrence Lessig recently, Jefferson Morley, F. William Engdahl, Ray McGovern, John Barber, uh, Toronto Burke, Me Too movement, Dreda Maxwell. Uh, longtime historian researcher of alternative views, uh, Dennis Bushnell, uh, David Icke. Okay, these are individuals around the globe, primarily here in the United States, because this is where uh, this is where we sit in the saddle, if you will, um, on discussion of truth. But uh, these are uh, these are concerned citizens, just like you, that are standing up to make a difference in the world, because you can. You're listening to my voice. You can. Now, unfortunately, Wednesday, I've had a number of people reach back out to me and complain about the audio um, from the doctor, from the interview uh, or discussion, rather, with Dr. Lee and the follow up discussion. Well, I follow up to that, but the following discussion, the double header discussion with JP Lindstrath. JP has been joining the program for well over a year now. It was Dr. Lee's first time on the program. She had some very nice things to say uh, about. Uh, the program and um and so this is why i've decided to um join you on a sunday and deliver a special edition of of some thoughts okay so anyway so the names that i've mentioned to you on iantrachier.com you're going to find those names you'll find corresponding links to those uh to those episodes when they join the program just click on them. If you're not familiar with the names of these people, I highly, of course, uh, recommend and urge you to research them. Uh, Paul Paul Hellier is the he's in his he's in his nineties. He's the longest acting political uh, uh, or member of uh, politics in Canada. Uh, he, at one point, he was basically at the level of a VP. He was to the to the. Uh, Prime Minister. He was Deputy Prime Minister at one point in his career. Paul Craig Roberts um, is a former lead economist under the Reagan administration. Cynthia McKinney, a six-term congresswoman out of uh, 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 Georgia. Uh, Tom Hartman, who will be rejoining the program this coming week, Wednesday. Um, he's got millions of listeners to his program, and he is a former New York Times bestselling author. Lawrence Lessig teaches at Harvard. He ran for president. He was a presidential candidate. Under the Democratic Party, um, 2016, Ray McGovern, a former CIA analyst. Uh, the list goes on. And these are these are people that are very well credentialed, credentialed, and are speaking out about uh, their uh, 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 their focus of uh, life, if you will. Right. So um, uh, the fact of the matter is that there is corruption. And it's running rampant, and it's becoming more and more corrupt. And if you're in the United States and you're listening to this, 
you need to do something about it. You need to stand up and do something about it. Okay, to give you an idea of where this program is something, I was invited to start the program. I, I didn't seek this out. It wasn't something that I was expecting to do. Um, in fact, it was if it wasn't for my late friend uh, uh, to join him at the Miami Beach uh, 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 town hall meeting, uh, in 2016 regarding the Zika virus and the controversial pesticide being sprayed, if I did not accept that invitation, I would have still been in the dark, in a sense, to what I have learned over the course of time that has transpired since that time. Okay, And directly after that meeting, and bit.ly.com, or excuse me, not bit.ly, bit.ly.com, not .com, bit.ly uh, forward slash Zika, Miami Beach, and that's capital Z-I-K-A, capital M and B. Okay, just, just Google Zika, Miami Beach, you're likely come up with my article, and that was, uh, and still is, published on Honey Colony, and Miriam reached out to me. Um, just after that interview, or excuse me, just after that town hall meeting in Miami Beach, I was interviewed by uh, CBS reporter Michelle Gellin, interviewed because I was simply a, a concerned citizen, nothing more, okay? And, uh, and, and what I learned was that Michelle her research, and she had been to Uganda, uh, the information was being suppressed at the local channel. She was not being permitted to divulge and share the information that she knew. Okay, so she had an issue with the reporting regarding that controversial pesticide. It's all suppressed. It is all suppressed. Hence, the platform Stop Mass Media, because Mass media in the United States, and certainly globally, is completely controlled and suppressed. It certainly is in China and Russia. Nothing against Chinese or Russians. I, I've had great friends from, but okay, this isn't, this is where the average American needs to move past. Okay? Now, I understand uh, ethnical divides, religious divides, um, uh, uh, political divides are common. But look at the principles of the United States, okay? And that is freedom of religion. And I know, okay, there's, there's, another, there's, an, there's another argument in that all the founding fathers were primarily, what, Anglo-Saxon heritage? Okay, but that's beside the point because it gave a platform for men like Martin Luther King to rise up. For men like... Uh, depending on where you like him or not, Malcolm X, to rise up and fight. So that same platform does exist on the very preliminary level. So if you can muster up the strength to get past those racial divides and ethical divides and then clinch on to the fact of a religious freedom, Okay, and it's so, okay. Then you've got a whole other argument in that: Are you trying to implement your religious conviction in the way that the country is governed? And it it may and it should not make that much of a difference as long as that key cog, religion, freedom of religion, remains. So everybody has the same freedoms. Okay, all right, and then you've got freedom of press. So some of these. Some of these fundamental elements of that Constitution that we know, it was written in the, what, 1883, was it? As a result of the 1776 Declaration of Independence. Hence, if you are an American, arguably, you still seemingly, anyway, have an opportunity to stand up and make a difference and voice your concerns. Okay, What I'm doing is exactly what you should be doing should this message resonate with you and look again because my friend and when he when he invited me to that town hall meeting i knew by the tone of his voice and i respected him he was from new york and he's had a had a very distinguished career in his industry and he would happen to be my best friend at the time in 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 the area and and i knew by the conviction in his voice that i needed to attend that meeting and that meeting spawned this program because of the research that I had done, the connections that I had made, and I shared it with another local resident, and they had invited me onto and into the studio in Winwood. Okay, and this is this is now the fourth year of doing this. Um, this is the information and along that road. Along that road, let me just mention the name Mila Demur, M I L A Demur. I think it's M I E R. Okay, someone who I uh, knew on a couple different. 
uh, levels and uh, platforms. Uh, Key West-based activist about the mosquito manufacturing. Yes, manufacturing and fabrication of mosquitoes. And that means non-natural mosquitoes being emitted into your atmosphere. Yes, this is a reality. This is a reality. It was linked to the Dibrom and Zika discussion. Well, she had put together... She had put together a list to, uh, of, of uh, other activists uh, that were against this lab in, in the Keys. Uh, I, I'm not sure if it was Marathon. I'm not sure exactly what key it was. And she'd gone to D.C. and delivered to the EPA. The morning before her meeting, she was found floating uh, dead in uh, the swimming pool of her hotel. Okay, So that's one example of what has transpired during the time since I'd start, I've started this podcast. Now, former uh, defense attorney based in California, San Francisco, Mark Shaw, who's been on this program a couple times, um, spoke about Dorothy Kilgallen. His research, he's been dedicating the past number of years to Dorothy Kilgallen and researching her association and her knowledge of the JFK assassination. She was very close to JFK, knew him very personally. And he says that the killer of Dorothy Kilgallen, now, notice that I said killer. If you know anything about Dorothy Kilgallen, the perception is that she overdosed on barbiturates, she, that she uh, essentially killed herself. What Mark says is that she was murdered and that her murderer still, still lives. The Reporter Who Knew Too Much is the name of his book. And it's now uh, had a follow-up book the, from the original and been picked up by a group associated and linked to Paramount. So the discussion continues, but it will be made into either a, uh, a silver screen, if you will, movie or uh, some type of a Netflix or Amazon um, documentary uh, or a, 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 a drama. I, I don't know the details, but a contract has been reached and there will be a production of that movie. He's, he's joined the program twice now, Mark Shaw. And I met with Mark in Northern California a couple years ago. And Mark said, yeah, Ian, you've got to write a book. Okay. The information and research that you've done, you've got to compile that and put that into a book. Okay. And so that is exactly what I set out to do well over a year and a half ago. Okay. As soon as he admonished, I mean, to do so, I began working on it. And, and I began working on uh, compiling everything that I had learned since, of course, what I experienced that day in the ch town hall chamber where a member from the CDC in Atlanta was on the phone with uh, Deputy Mayor El Elaine, uh, uh, I don't remember her last name, uh, pardon me. It's, it's all my, all the information is on Hud Hudak uh, on my website. In that article I mentioned to you and also on the website, theintrajay.com. Um, and the local mayor at the time, Dan, uh, Levine at the time. Um, uh, and so what I had found, what I had kind of perceived as an individual um, from the outside, if you will, perceiving inside, looking in, was that uh, uh, Levine uh, was being puppeteered by uh, the CDC and the local mayor. Um, and that all of his constituents... Uh, I think there were seven or eight council members uh, below him. All of them except one was going along with what he was being told to do. Okay, now I just formulated my sentence in a way I wanted it to, to come across. Formulated, or excuse me, uh, following what he, what, what he was being told to do. What he was being told to do. And so that's what I said on that CBS interview with Michelle, is that they're being puppeteered. Puppets. Puppets, puppets, puppets. And there was only one council member that stood up for the 300 uh, uh, irate citizens in the audience uh, that were screaming and yelling to stop the spraying of this uh, neurotoxin that had been banned by the European Union. So how does a mosquito repellent get banned in the European Union because it's a known neurotoxin and causes microcephaly in children, how does that receive permission to be sprayed over a, an American population, right, in Miami Beach? And the uh, counties of North Broward uh, would not permit that, and their local government uh, sprayed a, an organ organic uh, compound. Um, why? 
Why? Why was that permitted? Uh, and uh, Ricky Rosseo, the, the governor at the time of Puerto Rico, rejected a shipment of it that was being mandatorily sent by uh, the World Health Organization. Okay. So what's going on in politics in your medical care? Right? Because isn't 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 that pesticide tied to medicine? Because it's going to kill the mosquitoes that are going to make you sick. Yet on the flip side, on the flip side, it's the insecticide that is making you sick. Okay, so you read that article because I reached out to a number of professionals, and that's in the New England uh, Journal of Medicine, that's in Lancet in the UK, and no one could tell me, no no one that I reached out to and got a response from, no one could tell me that Zika itself, discovered in the Uganda forest in the 1940s by a Rockefeller-funded group, no one could tell me that Zika itself directly caused microcephaly in a developing fetus. That is the deformation of children's heads. That was all the, all the rage during, uh, what was it, the World Cup at that time in Brazil? Okay, in Recife, Brazil, these, 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 these towns being fumigated with these mosquito repellents and then these babies being born with deformed heads with microcephaly, right? So many different things can cause microcephaly. It includes uh, uh, consumption of other toxins, including uh, alcohol, something like that. So microcephaly is not just caused from a mosquito repellent, but certainly can much be exacerbated in the process uh, of it uh, by a heavier toxin like those that are found in, uh, in, in Nailid. Okay, And so that was being sprayed over the Miami Beach population and obviously, of course, the Wynwood uh, population. And a group of local politicians, a handful, two hands full, two hands full, uh, were not listening to the cry, if you will, of the local residents, demanding that they use something different. It was laughable. It was, it was total puppeteering to me. Total puppeteering. So, so then I started the program uh, because someone uh, liked what I was saying. They invited me into the studio. And here we are uh, going on uh, three and a half years later. Okay. And the program has received uh, some incredible guests. And, and, and so the question there is why? Because it's simply symbolic of the times, folks. You need to do something. You need to voice your opinion. You need to make a difference if this message resonates with you. If it doesn't resonate with you, then don't do anything. And just continuing being puppeted, if you will. Just continue, uh, just continue being... Um, brainwashed, okay? Because from there, from the Zika and Nailed controversy, I was led to a Stan former Stanford Hoover fellow, Anthony Sutton. And Russ Baker, who joined the program, and again, the audio is, <coughs> needs to be corrected, but Russ Baker, who joined the program uh, just two weeks ago, uh, very familiar with, with, with Anthony Sutton, a New York-based uh, journalist, uh, whowhatwhy.org. Okay, from so 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 from 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 2016. This is me, 2016. Zika Dibra, I'm investigating, researching, finding a link that the Rockefellers owned a patent and own that is current a patent on uh, the Zika virus, um, and they also were the largest shareholders of the chemical uh, Chevron Chemical Corporation that developed a nail it, Dibrom, currently. I, I think uh, currently the production um, uh, the production rights are with a group out of LA called Vanguard, Vanguard Chemical. All right, so uh, from from there I go to Anthony Sutton, who's teaching at Stanford and uh, delivered a speech in 1972, uh, and exposed some of his findings about these different connections uh, of American banks to German banks funding uh, Nazi Germany, so funding both sides of the conflict, if you will. Okay, I'm going to repeat that. Funding both sides of the conflict. Okay, funding both sides of the conflict. Let me, let, let me repeat that again. Let that sink in. Funding both sides of the conflict. Okay, that makes sense to you? What I just said to you? I'm going to say it one more time. And this is Ian Trottier for Discuss the Truth. Find my work at iantrottier.com. Funding, F-U-N-D-I-N-G, funding, a bank, funding both sides of a conflict. Are there ethics in money? Okay. Are there ethics in money? Okay. Everybody wants to make money, right? Sure. Everybody does. Everybody wants to have a nice house, nice clothes, nice food. But where does it? Where? Where's the line? Where's Where's the line? 
Do you have a problem? Do you have a problem with uh, Prescott Bush funding the Nazi regime and funding Hitler and slaughtering thousands of, of Jews? Do you have a problem with that? And also, uh, also funding the the coalition on the other side, England, France. Do you have a problem with it? So how deep is that state? How deep is the deep state? How deep is it? Okay, and this this all started for me from looking into Zika and uh, nail it in 2016 Miami Beach and 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 then being led to Anthony Sutton well after the 1972 uh, 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 talk that he gave at the convention center for the Republican Party uh, a Republican uh, political group whatever he returns to Palo Alto and he's reprimanded and he totally told never to divulge that information again if he did he lose his job well within a year I believe within a year year and a half he ends up walking away from the job anyway because again maybe the man had ethics Maybe the man had ethics. And from there, folks, from there he began self sub publishing his work. And you can find all of his work on my website. Just click the articles tab. And they're free available free on PDF format. Download. Um, and he's also published by a small publisher who, including Paul Hellyer, Daniel Estlin, have been published with and a couple other guests, coincidentally, they've been on my program, uh, uh, named Trine Day. Okay. So in April, coming up on a two months away, a couple months from now, in April, via Barnes & Noble, available now pre-order, Barnes & Noble, um, Amazon, chapters uh, out of Canada, um, uh, 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 retailers out of Aust in Australia, UK, <clears throat> Uh, Denmark, I urge you to purchase Freedom Reserve, No More Lies. Okay, you can get it for, I think, 20 bucks, 25 bucks. All right, if you purchase it through iantrache.com, you get a t shirt. No More Lies, Stop Mass Media. Okay, I urge you to do that. Read that early research that I came across that sparked and started. This program originally started as the Florida Sun and Spray Show. Okay, I think it was Florida Sun and Spray Show for a few months, and then it became Discussions of Truth. Because, again, how deep is the deep state? So let me go back. Let me go back to that phrase that I mentioned to you. Okay, what got Anthony Sutton into hot water with uh, his higher-ups at Stanford. What um, really gets suppressed by mainstream media. And as you look into it, it you get labeled as a theorist. Uh, you're conspiratorial are your theories, right? Because it's outrageous, right? It's they're outrageous thoughts. I mean even 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 George Bush. And again, I never I never I never questioned a nine eleven narrative. Ever. Ever. Okay, and in fact, uh, after nine eleven happened, I was uh, so upset that I was very, very close to joining the the U.S. Uh, military. Very, very close. Okay, I ended up not joining the U.S. military because I frankly don't believe in violence. I think it's a, I think it's a very, very shallow and weak portrayal of a human being. That's men and female mental state. Okay, it's it's a it's a sign of weakness. Okay, unfortunately, in the world today. Um, it's, it's just a matter of life, isn't it? It's just a matter of life. It seems to be a necessity to have a massive, powerful military. I have no problem with that. Okay. You got to defend yourself because on any level, anybody's going to try to take advantage of you, whether they are of your same religion, they're of your same ethnicity, they're of your same race, they're of your same home, you know, whatever. Somebody in your family, you must be able to defend yourself, period. Okay. But, but, but I do not believe in violence. I just, I just don't. Right? That's my personal decision, so I never joined the military. Plus, I thought, hey, you know, uh, if 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 we are literally physically attacked without this um, in, 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 in without this uh, 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 mirage or um, uh, the word I'm thinking of um, unseen uh, this unseen uh, soldier. Right, because that's that's what the, the the planes were used as bombs. Right, the jihad. They it was they were going to Allah. They they committed suicide and killed. Or, I mean, ended with three thousand people ended up dying in New York. 
um, uh, because because these pilots committed suicide, right? And they, uh, so that's that was that's the narrative. I've never questioned it. I never, never, ever questioned it. Okay, but uh, again, getting back to, I didn't join the military because I thought, well, if you you show up on the so- shores with boots and guns, then I'll defend. But I'm not going to go over there and take your oil, all right, from from you, okay? Because uh, because I have a bigger military than you, okay? That's that's right. That's for me. That's where I drew the line. That's just personally. That's for me. That's where I personally drew the line, and I decided to do something different with my time. And it's of course led me, uh, led me here. Um, uh, anyway. The point here, the point, the point here uh, being uh, addressed and discussed is um, like any other typical American. I never, ever, even considered looking into an alternative view or narrative of the 9/11 uh, uh, narrative, if you will, that was given to us. Okay, not until not until a uh, not until a crop duster, a crop duster buzzed over my head on what four or five. Different weekends spraying me with a known neurotoxin. Okay, that's when I started to take action. So the question for me is to you: When will you start to take action? And again, if you're still listening to this, that means the words that I'm saying are resonating with you, and you believe in them somewhat. It's up to you to dissect and find the truth in them, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. I can tell you they're true, but it's up to you to research on that and find that for yourself. But what's it going to take for you to stand up and shout? Okay, because we've now got the coronavirus, a major problem in, what is it, Israel. Now it's in South Korea. It's China. There are cases in the United States. It's not on an epidemic level. Martial law hasn't been declared. Um, But, again, I see this in a different view. I'm not saying coronavirus isn't lethal. I'm not saying it's not dangerous. But I, what I am saying is that from my research in 2016, because I could smell, I could smell the burn when that pesticide was released over Miami Beach. I could smell it. I could smell it. Okay. I can tell you this. That from my research, the Zika virus was no more dangerous to a healthy and mature adult immune system. Okay, I'm not saying to a child, I'm not saying to an elderly person. But, but but to an a, a immune, healthy adult immune system is no more dangerous than the common cold or flu. Okay, from my research, that's what I uh, discovered. It. Okay, and with that said, equally to the to the other side, the pesticide. Okay, the pesticide. Um, I, I'm using very preliminary and layman terms as I portray my findings and again bitly just just google zika miami beach uh, i'm sure you'll find the article if not go to iantrache.com go to um, uh, i think under uh, contact you'll find you'll find it under articles just click the link you'll, you, you'll find it um it wasn't a danger okay it wasn't a danger it was um it was a Conceived uh, 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 danger. Okay, so so from there, then I then I then of course Stanford. You know, guy that teaches at Stanford. Okay, no dummy. Guy's a smart guy. I'm gonna look into what he's saying, and it was making sense, and all the points were adding up. Okay, so again, your media is too massive. Stopmassmedia.com shows <clears throat> shows that a that as time goes by, fewer and fewer people begin to manipulate the way you receive your information and 
what information you receive. Okay, the graph is there at stopmassmedia.com. Okay, and, and again, what I'm saying is that media is being controlled by a smaller and smaller group. Okay, sound like 1%? Does it sound like global finances? It should, because the rich get richer, the poor get poorer, and the middle class in the United States, what is happening to that? What is happening to the, to the middle class in the United States? Is it shrinking? Is it going away? How do you feel about that? Right, how do you feel about that? Okay. Um, I gotta read, I gotta read something um, that I hope makes uh makes sense to you um and again this is all about whether this information is resonating with you or if it's not okay and if it is resonating with you you need to make you need to make a stand you need to start doing what i'm doing you need to contribute to what i'm doing if you don't want to do it uh and let me and other people uh do it okay because you've got to tear down you've got to tear down Big Daddy, all right. You you gotta tear. Yeah, that's what we were saying. But you've got to tear down this media empire, okay? Because all it's doing, a la Charlotte Eisenbit, a former guest on the program, who's a, uh, a head of the Department of Education, one of the heads of the Department of Education under the Reagan administration. Uh, she was fired for her stance on. Uh, get into. I'm not going to get into her her case, but simply put, author of the book deliberate dumbing down of America. The deliberate dumbing down of America. And this is written in the 1980s. The deliberate dumbing down of America. Likely, you've never heard of that book. And if you have, congratulations. If you if this is the first time you're hearing of that book, you need to look into it. Because that is exactly what's happening, is that you are being dumbed down. You're being dumbed down. You're being brainwashed. You're being made into a 9-to-5 taxpaying cog that is being, being told basically not to speak out, to silence, be silenced, and not question authority. Okay? And what's happening is that your political system is being completely manipulated. Both sides of it are controlled by the same people, essentially. Whether you're Democrat or you're Republican, they're both being sided by the same people. Look into it. The CFR. Servando Gonzalez, a Cuban-born historian, joined the program a couple months ago. Okay? I dare call it treason. Okay. He, he, he talks about communism and how Cuba's communism was simply a trial for what the United States is likely becoming. And he says it is becoming. Okay, That was one of the first things happening in Cuba, he says, was do not question authority. Okay, uh, What is political correctness? Don't say this. Okay, Allah, most recently... Um, uh, Zero Hedge, okay, the financial, uh, the the, fin the the financial blog Zero Hedge that questioned the, the coronavirus, kind of some weird stuff happening regarding the coronavirus. How legitimate really was it? Was it was it really found in a bat? Because uh, it, was it really found in the seafood market? Okay, or was it deliberately released? Or even was it accidentally released? If it was accidentally released, then you got to question the security around that laboratory in Wuhan. If it was deliberately released, then you got bigger issues. Okay, I'd probably side with the fact that it was deliberately released. Okay, it, it, the Rockefeller's own or started uh, basically at the University of Chicago, one of the finest medical uh, schools in the country. Okay, they uh, they they invested heavily in medicine. Okay, medicine is just another way to control you, vaccinate you, scare you, terrorize you. Okay, manipulate you. J.D. Rockefeller, sin. Excuse me. Uh, competition, rather, is a sin. All right. it, do, do you do you agree with that? You shouldn't. I hope you don't. Okay. Uh, I hope you do not. I really certainly hope you do not. So the round table. What is the round table? What is the trilateral commission? Okay. Anthony Sutton speaks extensively about it. 
how does that feed into the United Nations? What about the Bilderberg Group, the Club of Rome, Royal Institute of International Affairs? Sounds like higher up banking to me, doesn't it? Okay, that they all make up something called a round table. They're controlling the America, the United Kingdom, Europe, um, environmental eugenics. Is it too broad of a subject for you? What any any avenue you follow in life? Okay, let's simplify things. Any avenue you follow in life, okay, whether it's toothpaste to brush your teeth, whether it's water coming out of your faucet, uh, whether it's tires on your car, uh, and, and and now becoming more 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 so the air that you breathe, uh, the sun that that shines on you, okay, not not so much, but the, let's say the clothes that you wear, the school you go to, the, the whatever the 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 toll you pay on the road. Whatever it is, any aspect, and again, exclude sunlight, exclude air for the most part. Apart from that, any other aspect of your life is controlled by what? Money. All roads lead to money. Money. So whoever is manipulating the global economics or controlling or whoever are the controllers or the majority controllers of global economics, manipulate the way you live your life. Absolutely. Undoubtedly. Okay? And the more powerful you become economically, the more you have a say in the way the world operates. Now, you've got to get to some very high levels of wealth to start doing that. Let's just insert a couple. The Queen of England. The Rothschilds. The Rockefeller, the Morgans, okay, and even Bill Gates, okay. Now it's arguable Bill Gates' wealth compared to a family like the Rothschild, who have been wealthy for hundreds of years. Bill Gates' new wealth is Bill Gates really the second or whatever it is now today, or Jeff Bezos? Are they is is that Forbes list really accurate? Is it accurate? And are you going to be smashed and ridiculed if you question? You really think Bill Gates is wealthier than the Queen of England? I don't. That's my personal opinion. I simply do not. She's got a chariot of gold. She's got palaces she she's she's uh, head of the Commonwealth uh, of what is it a fifth of the landmass across the globe? That's a very powerful woman, okay. And if Bill Gates, for instance, or Jeff Bezos, or Warren Buffett, or Carlos Slim, if they are wealthier than some of these very wealthy families uh, historically, I I want the proof. I want the proof. I don't want Forbes to just tell me that. I want the proof, and so should you. Okay, so should you. So let's let's get into something here quickly as we wind down last moments of the show. Um, let's get into something called banking manipulation, i.e. a central bank. Americans are led to believe that a central bank does not exist. Bank of America is not a central bank. Wells Fargo, not a central bank. J.P. Morgan, it's not a central bank. Okay, but yet those aren't banks tied to the federal government in the sense of those banks don't, well, they don't operate the U.S. Economy, uh, economics. They do and they don't. My point is this. They feed into they the FDSC, right? They all feed. They all rely on a bigger bank. Okay, they're all supported and insured by a bigger bank. In the United States, that is the Federal Reserve Bank. Okay, um, what was what was Folks, okay, I'm trying to collect myself here. What was uh, 
All right. President Wilson signed into law the Federal Reserve Act, 1913. Okay. That changed the landscape of politics and economics and much of the way of life in America for, let's hope not good, but in a way that is devastating. You will find quotes by Truman himself regretting that he ever did that. He was arguably manipulated into doing that. G. Edward Griffin, former guest on this program, spoke about his book that he wrote a few decades ago. The Creature of Jekyll Island. Well, what happened on Jekyll Island? Have you ever heard of Jekyll Island? Do you know where Jekyll Island is? Okay, It's in Georgia. And it basically was the preceding the preceding meeting to the drafting or rather it was the meeting for the drafting of the Federal Reserve Act. What happened with the Federal Reserve Act? Is there anything federal about it? It was passed by Congress, wasn't it? Okay, FDR or not FDR. Uh, uh, Wilson signed it into into law, didn't he? That makes it federal, doesn't it? Doesn't that make it federal? Does not make it federal? And so if it's federal, then why isn't it audited? Why don't you, an a, a seemingly an average person, why don't you have access to knowing its shareholders? You don't. Okay? You don't. Because it is a central bank. Yes, the United States is operated by a central bank, and that central bank, and again, uh, you should be disputing this, uh, but from, from what I have researched and from what I have gathered, that central bank, the Federal Reserve Bank, reports to another bank. Yes, it is subjugated to the laws of another bank. What language am I speaking? So if you are now not questioning the Bank of England, oh, you should be, because the city of London is not the city of London that you think it is. London is London. With Big Ben and Parliament, Westminster Abbey, speaking of Westminster Abbey, but the city of London is something different. It is a private financial institution. It's a segregated neighborhood. And the Queen of England must knock on its door to enter. That in itself should get you curiously interested in what's happening in global finances. Okay? Uh, who controls the Bank of England? All right, there's various people that control it. Who really controls the Bank of England? And what are its ties? But hold on a second here. Because the city of London was founded by Romans. right? And William the Conqueror came many years after the Romans. Yet, the city of London maintained its privacy. Before William the Conqueror and after William the Conqueror all the way to today. So where did the Romans come from? Rome. So if you're not leading back to the Roman Empire, then as far as I'm concerned, you're on a wild goose chase. Goose chase. Okay. Now, the Rockefellers, arguably, or excuse me, uh, the Rothschild, arguably, well, not arguably, they are uh, one of the wealthiest families on the planet. Okay. Bill Gates, one of the wealthiest people on the planet. There's no doubt about that. Okay. Are there issues in the economic system in the United States that are so corrupt that they're not only way out of your control of correcting, but they're simply contributing to the spiral, the downward spiral of the American way of life? The corruption. Again, again, you take all elements of the way you live your life and they all go back to one thing. If you don't have script, if you don't have money, if you will, if you don't have 
dollars, I'm using these terms loosely, in your pocket to pay for things, you're not going to get very far in life. You're not. Okay. Um, yes, you can breathe, but you're not going to be able to buy food to eat. Yes, you can plant food and hope that the rain uh, and the sun grow that food. But basically, that's going to be on land that you're going to have to pay taxes on. So it doesn't matter the way that you look at it. All life channels back to money. To money. That system is corrupt. There's no doubt about it. Tell me otherwise. Tell me otherwise. And that system not only controls the way that you buy your food and your clothing and your pay your mortgage and your car payments and your new land or your new businesses or your new airport or your aircraft or whatever you're buying with that. And it, 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 but, but that system controls your politics. And those politicians, at least the way that the politics, if you will, were, were, were designed in the United States, those politicians represent you. Because they are you, right? We, the people. Okay, this message should be urgent for you. Should be urgent for you, all right? And I think one of the main questions here today is, and unfortunately that interview... Uh, with uh, JP, the most recent one, we got into FDR and some other things. Uh, uh, we'll have to reschedule that. Um, was not aired, or it was aired, but not recorded. Um, unfortunately, um, it wasn't. But in that the discussion with JP, I addressed the fact that George Washington owned shares of the Bank of England during the American Revolution. Funding both sides of a conflict? Does that come to mind for you? Funding both sides of a conflict? Why would he... England is his enemy, isn't it? Isn't it? Weren't the English his enemy? Wasn't he fighting against the English? Yet he owned shares in the Bank of England. And then on the flip side, look at this. Why would the Bank of England permit that? He was an enemy, wasn't he? Wasn't he? So from the inception of the from the inception of the of, of, of the American system that we, that we all live today, how just was it? You have a country that is trillions and trillions of dollars in debt. Who are they in debt to? Oh, they're in debt to the Chinese. Oh, they're they're in debt to the Russians. Read Anthony Sutton's material. U.S. economics built. Russia. Who built U.S. economics is the question. And is it deeper? Does it go deeper than the Bank of England? Does it go deeper than the Bank of England? What is the new world order? Okay. Because if you're going to aerial spray over a population and spray them with toxins and spray their children and their grandparents and spray all walks of life with toxins, then yes, folks, you're entering into a new world order. And that is exactly where we are today. Hegelian dialectic, folks. The Hegelian dialectic. Yes, it goes deeper than that. No, we do not have Alexander's libraries available to us anymore. Uh, but we have some very intelligent people on the planet. And yes, we can make change. Problem, reaction, solution. For instance, problems are engineered to provoke fear and outcry. Just consider it. This is all. This is all. Just, just consider it. Because like I told you, prior to 2016, I never questioned... 9-11 narrative, even though I had had people tell me that the Vietnam War was all about rubber cars, all feeding back to what? Oil, the gas industry, Rockefeller, Michelin tires, rubber trees, Vietnam. Yet on the preliminary side, on the very shallow side, it's about democracy, Hmm. Okay. So pro just consider, that's all. Just consider the alternative view, alternative thought. 
Problems are engineered to provoke fear and outcry. The public's shock and outrage is channeled through media coverage. The public, you and me, willingly and unconsequentially, unconsequentially accept the solution. Problem, reaction, solution. In other words, ordo ab chao. Order out of chaos, new world order. It's right on the back of your dollar bill. New world order. Novus Ordo Seclorum. Okay. That there would be, in essence, a philosophical approach of the Hegelian dialectic. You're living, folks, in a very fake democracy. It's up to you to straighten it up. No one else can do it. No one else can do it. You cannot rely on your politicians to straighten out the filthy corruption in this country. I urge you not to take sides politically. Do not take sides politically. Listen to the words of Martin Luther King. Page 136 in Strength to Love. Truth is not found in the thesis, nor the antithesis. Truth is found in the emerging sin thesis, which reconciles the truths of both. You are living in a fake democracy. Anthony Sutton, Stanford Hoover Fellow. And if these quotes, if you can prove me wrong, that these people never said these quotes, then please... Please contact me, iantrotti.com, I-A-N-T-R-O-T-T-I-R.com. The clash of opposites makes for progress. If you can control the opposites, you dominate the nature of the outcome. Now, take this in consideration as I leave you on this Sunday afternoon. Just consider this. It's been 2,000 years, okay? We live under the Gregor Gregorian calendar, don't we? Even, even George Washington had, had issues, right? The Julian versus Gregorian calendar, that's, that's, why, uh, that's why Washington had two birthdays, right? Leap years, okay? It's been 2,000 years since uh, the inception of um, uh, Jesus and Christ and his church is, or whatever. And, and that, I mean, there are religions, <laughs> there are religions that far predate the life of Jesus Christ. And you're taking it, but, 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 but in, in modern times, okay, I'm trying to give a conceptual view of modern, what we live as, know as reality, okay? Um, Neanderthal, Cro-Magnon, right, far, far, of course, uh, predate um, uh, those living around the time of Jesus Christ or anybody in the Roman or Greek or even Egyptian uh, empires at that time. But as we see modern world, right, as we see uh, a man in the White House that uh, has access to weapons that can completely obliterate life as we know it, okay, as, as we're living this time in 2020, uh, we've built this We've built this for ourselves. This is this is no one to blame but us. Okay, and and again, if my words are resonating with you, and you don't go out and share this episode, if you don't go out and contact your local newspaper, if you don't go out and start writing your own book or start your own podcast or go into your local radio station or TV station, if you don't start looking into this and voicing your own research and your own opinion, then my job has completely failed. That is the urgency from which I speak to you today. You, and only you, can make a change. And I urge you to stay away from the political system that we have allowed our forefathers and ourselves to create. Okay, it's far too corrupt, and it's only going to implode. 
That's by design. Very arguably, that is by design. Okay, so if you take into consideration 2,000 years, and you compare that to when Neanderthal were walking the planet, it's a very short period of time. It's a very short period of time. The reality, as you know it, your world is being manipulated. Who is it being manipulated by? Until Wednesday with Tom Hartman, this has been Discuss Your Truth, special edition on Sunday. I'm your host, Ian Hamilton Trottier. Follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, contribute to the show, get one of the shirts, no more lies, stop mass media. Until then, folks, simply be awesome.